So what I want to talk about today is kind of a look back on what I learned being part of a Apache podling. Um, I think that it's kind of interesting for people who have never been in an Apache project. Um, it's interesting. It might be interesting for people who are in Apache projects that are long removed from the podlings. Uh, people, you know, who may not know how it's operating today. Um, and for folks who are thinking about maybe donating a project to Apache or being part of a podling. So this is me. My name is Joe Brockmeyer. Uh, this is my email and Twitter. So if you ever need to get in touch with me, those are the ways to do so. Uh, I love it when people tweet during presentations. Um, let the world know what's going on. And this is my highly infrequently updated blog that I, every time I do a presentation, I make a kind of a mental pledge that, you know, I'm going to update my blog more often, and then that doesn't happen. Uh, so this is about me. Uh, I'm on the Red Hat Open Source and Standards team, uh, formerly the OpenSUSE community manager. I'm a recovering tech journalist. Uh, I also used to work for Citrix. That's how I became involved with Apache. I was on the uh, CloudStack podling a little bit after it joined Apache. Uh, I'm now a PMC member for Apache CloudStack, and I'm on the incubator PMC. By the way, I know there's a lot of you in the room, but feel free to shout out questions. We'll, we'll try to work everybody in. Uh, so I want to start with a disclaimer. I'm going to talk a lot about things that I think could be better in the Apache uh, incubator. That does not mean that I don't uh, love the Apache incubator. Um, I don't, you know, we all understand that no one is perfect. There will always be problems. I'm going to start then by talking about what I personally learned as somebody contributing and being part of a podling. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about what companies should expect when they donate a project to Apache. Uh, and then I want to talk about how Apache might improve the incubator. And then I'm going to suggest how we might fix that. So all the opinions here are mine and mine alone. So I'm not speaking for Red Hat. I'm not speaking for Citrix. Uh, I'm not speaking for anybody else in CloudStack. You get the idea. This is my experience and one podling experience. Um, you know, the experience Open Office had through the, through the incubator is going to be different than mine. The experience that Sentry and, uh, you know, all the current podlings is going to be slightly different because they're all different projects. So each project is going to be a little bit different. Um, they don't have the same needs. They don't have the same wants. The incubator is always going to be imperfect, and we should understand that. Um, it's always a process of improving things. So here's why I love the incubator. Um, like I said, I used to work for Novell. I was the OpenSUSE community manager. Uh, and there were a lot of things that I found unsatisfying about that experience. I loved the SUSE community. Uh, I loved a lot of the people that I worked with. But there were a lot of corporate things that got in the way of making that as an effective a, a project as it could have been. And there was no, you know, Novell was where the buck stopped for OpenSUSE, okay? I like the fact that when a project goes into Apache, there is actually a governing body and there are people who can say, no, really, this is the way a community project should be run. And just because you're from company foo does not mean that you get to override that. And I really like that for an open source project. I like the fact that it aspires to put community first uh, instead of necessarily, you know, getting this release out on time and, and, you know, making sure that we get the product out on time. Those things are important, but they can be damaging to an open source project. I like the fact that it is part of a life cycle for projects and that Apache has sort of an opinion about projects having a beginning, a middle, and possibly an end. You know, how many folks are familiar with the Apache Attic? Really? Okay, you guys just being low key or you've never heard of it? Okay, so, sorry? Okay, so there actually is an Apache Attic. There actually are processes for saying, you know what? This project has not updated in a long time. And instead of just leaving it, you know, with the web page full of bit rot, and people coming back and going, oh, this looks really exciting. It hasn't been updated since 2005. You know, there is a process for basically saying, you know what? This project is no longer active. Let's go ahead and, and, and make people aware of that. And there is a process of shutting down that involves discussions. 
and maybe giving people an opportunity to say, wait, 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 I care about that project, I can jump in. I like the fact that the incubator is flexible, and this will come up a little bit later. I like the fact, though, that there are many suggested guidelines and, and things, but very few of them are completely inflexible. Mentoring is deeply important. A lot of projects come into Apache with people who have never donated or never contributed to an open source project before. And there are a lot of open source projects that have no concept of mentoring at all. Now, some successful projects, let's say Fedora, have people who will, if they see someone contributing, come along and informally mentor them. And they have things like the ambassadors where people do mentor just that group of people into the ambassador program. But generally speaking, a lot of times contributing to open source is just you're flailing. You have no idea what is expected of you. You have no idea um, you know, how to get involved in the project. There's not really a formal structure you can follow. Um, it also strives to create a level playing field for contributors, which I think is extremely important. I think it is important to have a concept that you know, if you come along with a patch, it should be reviewed. It should be looked at. Um, just because you don't work for a certain company doesn't mean that you can't get something in. But no one is perfect. So let's talk about some lessons I learned because I learned a lot going through the incubator process and I've been following open source and participating to some extent since 1999. My first experience in an Apache project was 2012. So I had accumulated some experience by that point, not as much as a lot of folks, but I wasn't completely new to open source. But I found out that what I knew from things like OpenSUSE um, were not necessarily going to translate perfectly into Apache. So I had a lot to learn about Apache processes and culture. Um, one of the things I found is that almost everything is gonna take longer than you would expect uh, when you are setting up a podling. Uh, when you need to do things, they, you know, like you, you should not procrastinate about saying, you know, I'll take on this task which needs to involve infra. Don't wait around and expect that you're going to file a ticket with infra and it's going to happen in 24 hours necessarily, uh, or 48, or 72, or a week, uh, depending on the complexity and, and uh, difficulty of that task and the resources required. I am not, so uh, as I mentioned, I'm a recovering tech journalist, and so a lot of the work that I have done since 1999 has involved gathering information and putting it together in article or, or post form and submitting it to an editor, and you know, 95% of that is solo work. So I am not the best person in the world. Uh, that kind of work style does not really lend itself very well to asking people for help uh, and I am not the best person in the world at saying, this is something I don't recognize. I will go off and try to figure it out myself instead of trying to ask people for help, which turns out often to be a wrong instinct. Uh, and I recognize that in other people. There are people who are very good at just saying, I don't know this, I'll go ask for help. I am not naturally one of those people. Uh, and so that's something that I learned uh, working with CloudStack. It doesn't mean I'm perfect at it, but it is something that you need to learn when working in a community project. You need to go in with the idea to leave things better than you find them, okay? Um, as an example, if you see something in the incubator documentation that is broken or missing, a lot of people will see it, complain, and move on. Uh, you need to actually Take the time when you get the answer to go back and correct the documentation or go back and fix things and be part of making it better for the next person. Does that make sense? Um, you know, so if you see something wrong with the documentation, documentation for Apache CMS, you should go back and patch that. Don't just figure it out for yourself and then never get it straight. Uh, I wasn't always as good at that as I should be, but I did a lot of that with CloudStacks documentation. There were a lot of places where I made a policy of, if I don't know how to do this and I have to ask other people for help or I have to spend an hour or two figuring it out, I'm gonna go back and put it on the wiki or I'm gonna go back and put it on the website. You need to accept, and this is another thing I'm not great at, accept you will be wrong sometimes. 
This is definitely not a strength of a lot of people. Um, be able to say something on a mailing list and be corrected and find out you're wrong and actually graciously accept that. That is an incredibly useful skill in open source, especially in Apache. Um, one thing, how many folks here are, uh, how many folks are actually committers, PMC members, or have some sort of hat within Apache? Okay. So are you involved? You're, you're sitting through the presentation. Are you? I'm sorry? Uh, I asked how many people are committers or PMC, you know, like basically have some status in Apache. Sorry? You're a contributor. Okay. Okay. Which uh, project? I'm sorry? Okay. Uh, how about you in the back? Which, are you interested in a specific project or? Okay, okay, cool. Um, to me, and this isn't true for everyone, but to me, I've been involved in open source a long time and to me, Apache has an enormous brand and a lot of gravitas, if I said that right. Um, and so when I was offered, uh, you know, status as a committer and when I was offered uh, you know, invited to join the PMC and off, invited to join the IPMC. All of those things to me meant a great deal more than just what I do for a living because it is a, to me it's a, you know, culturally important thing. This isn't true for everybody and you need to understand that when you're working in Apache community that some people who are contributing to Apache may not care as deeply as you do about the culture and about the community. Uh, and you need to be able to work with those folks and understand them just as well as the folks like, you know, David Nally that I worked with on CloudStack that are deeply invested in the culture and the community. Uh, another thing I would advise when you are working heavily towards, uh, you know, getting a project towards graduation, you will probably at some point hit, uh, if you are in a project that has multiple companies or multiple people with interest from outside a single company, and we certainly hope that's the case, right? Um, you may occasionally hit friction with other people. You may hit friction or misunderstandings with mentors. I would, one of the things that I've found uh, developers to be incredibly bad at is learning when to just stop with emailing back and forth and say, hey, how about we pick up a phone or get on Skype or get on a Google Hangout and talk, you know, and actually pull it off the email list and try to resolve a problem in real time as human beings instead of tossing emails back and forth. Has anybody, does anybody do this other than me? Like when you see a, a bone of contention or something or, or even let's, let's leave conflict out of it, just a technical thing where You've, you, you've gotten into an email exchange with someone and you're talking about one thing and they're talking about another and email, more email is not going to solve that communication gap. Anybody see this problem happening in their day job or in their work? That's never happened to you? Okay. Sure. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'll, let me give an anonymized example. So, uh, I had very few issues with people outside of Citrix when I was involved in CloudStack, but we had a lot of people from Citrix who were not, in, not people who had previously had experience with open source projects. And I found it much more expedient at a certain point to pick up a phone and set up a meeting with them and say, hey, I see you doing this in the project and uh, that's really not the Apache way. This is something we should do differently. And I didn't try to solve that over email and call somebody out. I didn't try to 
even privately via email, because I usually find giving someone praise over email works great. Giving someone critiques over email, usually not so much. Um, and that, that too, um, you should, Praise publicly, freely, all the time. Give people credit when they do good things. Give people attaboys. Um, give people recognition when they do things right. If you have critiques, keep them technical. Keep them impersonal. You know, don't, don't bring someone's personality into something. If you have a critique of something, just impassionate, you know, say, this, this was done this way, it should really be done this way, you know. Uh, words, words like stupid or, uh, you know, terrible, things like that should not enter into your email very often, uh, except maybe it would be terrible if this happened or something. Uh, and flames should be very sparingly sent. I'm not going to say never send them, but I'm going to say do it very infrequently. Uh, so the next part, and this is going to be probably the longest part, is things I think companies should consider when going to Apache. Um, first of all, what do, what do companies usually want? Uh, if you are considering taking a project to Apache, I think it is deeply important to have goals. I have found too many companies uh, who want to do things in Apache or other communities that have very fuzzy goals. And if you have very fuzzy goals, you may not recognize them or be able to. Uh, so what do companies want? They want the Apache brand. They want, uh, I was just in Marvin Humphrey's talk a few minutes ago, and he talked about, uh, you know, Apache is well recognized, right? People kind of think they understand the Apache community and the licensing and all the things that are required to release software. So companies want that seal for their project. They want a wider adoption of the technologies. You know, people don't go to Apache because they don't want contributions and they don't want wider recognition. Maybe they want uh, contributors. I say maybe because I do see projects in the incubator that are not trying very hard for outside contributors. They essentially want, seem to want to do something in Apache to, you know, use the Apache brand to make feel, people feel comfortable with their governance, governance of an open source project. But they're not too keen on losing the control to those other folks and actually getting contributions. And we'll talk much more about that. Uh, they want the business friendly governance and licensing. And they want a broader ecosystem, even if they don't necessarily want broader contributions. They want other people building things around their project. So branding, this is, um, this is a little controversial. I don't think Shane agrees with me on this, uh, but I would, I would say if I had worked at Citrix when they were proposing CloudStack, I would have screamed bloody murder about donating the CloudStack brand. It was one of the worst decisions they made. Um, when you have an established product with a name and then decide later, you know, I want this now to go into Apache. Do not take, you know, the one thing that a company has built up that they can retain is the trademark and the brand recognition of that thing. Uh, we lost, so we used to use a thing called Leadlander on cloudstack.org that would let uh, our sales folks say, oh, a company from, you know, like 50 people a day from Sony are looking at this. Maybe we should call on Sony and see if they might like to buy support. We lost that because we no longer had a way to do lead generation off the site because we can no longer do that on an Apache website, which is how it should be. Uh, we lost all the Google juice uh, for CloudStack. So all of the links, everything that they had built up over years, gone. Social media, they had built up a pretty good social media uh, recognition on Twitter and LinkedIn and, and uh, Facebook, all of that has to be turned over to the community. So if you have a Twitter account with 50,000 followers for your product, and you donate that trademark to Apache, and your social media people who are no longer committers, no longer should have access to that. So there is a huge complicating factor trying to do marketing around an existing name. 
Uh, using Apache trademarks is complicated, and a lot of companies get it wrong. Um, you know, a lot of companies say, well, we donated a Project Foo, so now we just want to call it Acme Foo. You can't do that. And that's very counterintuitive to a lot of folks. You do need a permission to use Apache trademarks. And a lot of companies are not geared to going to the community and getting that permission. Press releases, events, things that use that name require approvals from the PMC. You are no longer in control of your brand. Infrastructure. Um, companies need to understand that when you used to be able to just go to your infra and say, we need a new mailing list, or we need a, you know, this, that, or the other, build system, whatever. Those things are complicated now. You need to go through Apache Infra. You will need to move existing mailing lists and bug trackers if you're moving an existing project. Um, you can use third-party resources, but they require some interaction and approval from the Infra team. Has anybody done that work with the Infra team to set up third-party stuff like a build service? So we have done that uh, with Jenkins so far. <coughs> Uh, but we're using a uh, different domain currently. So if you want to use Jenkins with CloudStack, we have several build servers on buildacloud.org because it, they don't want third-party services with Apache, CloudStack, Apache, whatever. Um, one thing I would stress is when you do, so if you are a company with a project going into Apache, the initial PPMC and committers list should probably include some non-developers. So if you have a marketing person responsible for that, you may want to consider making them part of the governance that goes in. Because it is much harder to get committership if you're doing marketing. It's much harder for people to watch what you're doing and say, yeah, that, you know, people understand and have pretty good metrics for saying, you know, this guy is constantly sending patches and we're tired of, of applying the patches. They're good, he should be a committer, she should be a committer. Um, things like organizing events are very valuable, but they're harder to evaluate and uh, grant committership or leadership in a project. Management really needs to back the transition. If you have product management folks, if you have uh, lead engineers or folks who are not sold on Apache, you're gonna have a bad time. Um, you need to understand that productivity will take an initial hit. There is a lot of overhead involved in getting a project up and running in Apache. You will take an initial hit. Not may, you will. If you are basing a schedule on something that's going into the incubator, it's gonna get derailed a little bit, more than likely. You are going to seed some control over development. People are going to come in with patches and feature ideas. People are gonna come in and say, for example, that storage refactor that you're doing because you're working with a partner is very specific to that partner. And it does, it harms performance or it makes it harder for me to add my patches from the competitor, okay? Understand that you may not get things in as quickly as you did when you controlled the development process. You should have a way to reward developers for doing community work and they should have objectives that involve that work. When a, developer's, when a person is incented only to get features in or a person is incented to hit guidelines and none of this has to do with the community, do you think they're gonna act in the best interest of the community or are they gonna go for their objectives? There are some folks who are dedicated to, being, to working in Apache and doing the community thing, but a lot of them are just gonna work towards their objectives, which can be harmful to the community. Finally, you can lead a developer to, to Apache, but you can't make her like it. There were, there were a number of folks that I work with at Citrix that basically hated the Apache process, that chafed at it at every turn. They didn't like having to wait 72 hours for a merge request. They didn't like being able not to walk down the hall and discuss something with their peers and just make it happen. They didn't like having to go to the mailing list, etc. If you have a lot of folks on your team that are like that, you're gonna have problems. Um, for developers, you have to understand it's not just about the code. Getting code in fast and furiously is not the only objective. Being an Apache means doing the work in the open, not merely having public source code. So that means filing, you know, change 
uh, RFCs, that means taking feedback on features and your code. Again, decisions can't be just taken privately. You need to check your Acme hat at the door. You can't just come in and say, well, I work for Acme and we sponsor this project, so you must take this. You can't do that. Um, you need to plan ahead for really big changes. If you're going to do a code refactor, you can't just slap that in a week before the release and hope that it works. You need to actively solicit uh, input from mentors. One of the things that I found was uh, Apache CloudStack was fairly successful because we had people like David Nally and Chip Childers who went out of their way to talk to the mentors. They didn't wait for the mentors to give us feedback. They went out and said, hey, uh, we want to do this and what do you think about this or what can we be doing better? Um, they got to know the mentors, they got to know the infra team, and they actively went out to become part of the Apache project and not focus solely on CloudStack. And the other thing I would tell developers um, before they get involved is you're going to think about legal issues probably more than you ever have. Uh, I did a talk about why I love software foundations and I made a comment, uh, this was at Monktoberfest, I made a comment about Apache having really heavy legal bureaucracy and then I had a guy in the back of the room, you've never worked with Eclipse, have you? Um, but other than that, you know, if, you come, if you're coming from Eclipse, you'll be fine. If you're just used to throwing things up on GitHub, you may have some adjustment to do. Uh, this is something that is true for all open source projects, but this is uh, specifically for Apache projects. You are understaffed for documentation. I don't even need to know how many people you have working on documentation. I can tell you your project is understaffed. Um, you need to have a plan to provide contributor docs before you enter the incubator. You need user support. You should, your company should, if you're putting a project into the podling, you should have a couple people targeted on doing nothing but being on the user list and answering user support questions. People need your, so you, you need to have some of your developers also uh, targeted to spending time on the list and ask, answering people's questions. That's how you get contributors. When someone comes along with a patch and has a question, you need someone there to answer those questions because you lose developers very quickly if they can't get help because your engineers understand the code base and other people, just because they can look at it doesn't mean they grasp it or understand it immediately. They will have questions. So, any comments or questions or any flames or anything to this point in the presentation? All right, I'm, I'm hoping this is useful in, in some way. Uh, so here's some things on how I think the incubator can improve. Um, the incubator documentation, and Marvin Humphrey ta uh, touched on this in his talk earlier today, it is in great need of improvement and streamlining. Uh, I have plowed through it uh, several times looking for this, that, or the other, and you will find places where it is contradictory. You will find places where it's not really clear if something is a rule or a guideline. Uh, you will find, you will have a hard time finding certain information, and uh, I think if you printed out all the incubator documentation, it would probably be like 30, 40 pages if you printed it all out. Uh, and that's a lot of overhead for people. Um, it's great that it's there and it's, it's necessary, but it could probably be improved. The infrastructure team is great. I've heard people complain about the infrastructure team from years ago, and my understanding is that Apache infrastructure team is, is light years better than it was years prior. Uh, and my experience with the infrastructure team has been almost uniformly positive, uh, but sometimes things take a while to provision. Um, you know, I have found that being nice to the infra team and dropping in on IRC a couple days after a ticket hasn't moved and asking politely is very effective. I have found that it's a bad idea to complain about a project that one of the folks in the infra team has written without knowing that they were the one that created it. And uh, you might want to think twice before just kind of venting about something. Uh, I have said some incredibly dumb things about Apache CMS right to the people who wrote it without knowledge they were the ones that did. Um, that was not good. But they were also incredibly nice about it. Um, so I have nothing but good things to say about the infra team. 
uh, except that they need more resources and more help. Deviating from norms in Apache, how many folks followed, for example, uh, you know, open offices strive to release binaries? Anybody follow those conversations and, and uh, tribulations? Really? Nobody? Okay. Um, let's just say that, uh, you know, Apache has always released source code. That's the way it's always been done. And they were not well prepared for the idea of releasing binaries officially. And so if you need to do something non deeply non-standard, uh, if you need infrastructure, the Git transition was incredibly hard, the first projects that wanted that. Uh, so you can run into things where deviating can be difficult. The promotional resources are extremely limited. If you want to promote the project, you're going to have to find bodies to do that. Um, I really like Sally Kudari, who is a PR for Apache, but she is one person for 149 projects plus uh, an incubator of like 43 projects. So I found PR folks are doing lucky to to promote, you know, say, four or five really active projects for a company like Red Hat. Trying to cover 140 something is insane. So Sally's resources are mostly limited to working with, thing, with top level projects on press releases and getting those out to the wire and uh, taking incoming requests, not so much outgoing. Mentoring, I have a couple of comments about mentoring. The uh, engagement of mentors for a project can vary wildly between people who are heavily active in a project, paying attention to the mailing list almost every day, and mentors who you never hear from at all. And you have no idea if they're actually providing, you know, if they're, you have no idea if they're looking at the list and happy with things are going, or they're just not paying any attention to you. Uh, it is sometimes difficult to get an answer from the mentors. Um, going to general at Apache and asking a question sometimes results in a very quick answer followed by a quick contradiction to that answer uh, or a direction to another list like legal discuss where things can languish. Um, and that's hard for projects when they're trying to get a release out and you can't get an opinion on a legal question. Uh, that can be very difficult. We, had, uh, we ran into that, for example, with export controls and encryption where we were facing kind of a mountain of paperwork for export controls and didn't know if we actually needed to do it or not. We couldn't get anybody to say definitively yes or no. The documentation is painful, uh, and I added this to the slide right during Marvin's talk because he specifically said painful. Um, release versus non-release is a little uh, iffy. Um, is a RC a release or is it just to the developers? Do you need to do a vote before you call something an RC? Do you need to, you know, what about nightly builds? And how much can you advertise those? Is a little unclear. Um, I would suggest, this is something I would like to see changed, is a real-time conversation before a project officially enters the incubator with the uh, initial PMC and committers so they can ask questions and get them answered in real time and they can get expectations from their mentors and get to know them. Uh, I am a mentor for a project. Uh, I feel like, I feel fairly uncertain sometimes providing guidance to that because I'm still fairly new. Um, there are things I feel very firm about, but there are other things I'm a little iffy on. I would, uh, I would suggest that some mentoring for new mentors might not be a bad idea. And finally, uh, this, I fit this under mentors, but uh, mentoring, but I, it's more of a general commentary on Apache. Apache is not currently a very diverse organization, and it needs some work in that area. Uh, you know, if you look around at the people involved in the IPMC and the people in a lot of projects, we are kind of a all-male cast, or almost. Um, there are a couple of people who are involved in projects who are not, but we're not doing much to remedy that, and I think that limits the interest of some projects becoming Apache podlings and top-level projects. Um, I would like to see some more effort focused there. And I have talked to a couple people who feel more strongly about that than I, who have been shot down on attempts to, to increase that. 
So finally, I would say, you know, there are many things I called out that could use improvement, and I would suggest that it's really up to me and people in this room to fix them, because if we don't, who's going to? So for anybody who is involved in the IPMC, or even if you're not, uh, there's nothing preventing you from getting involved in trying to fix things and suggesting fixes, sending patches. The IPMC is just like any other project. If you come in and you submit patches to documentation or suggestions and you do that long enough and you do good work, they're finally going to get irritated implementing your suggestions and just say, what? Here, here's the contributor bit, here's the PMC hat, go do it, go do it. In the end, I want to reinforce this. I still love the incubator, I love the concept of it, and I, you know, I think it is far and away, uh, what was the phrase Marvin used earlier, the least worst way to do this kind of de development and community building. So, that's all I have. If there are any other, any questions, commentary, or flames, I will take them now. Um, otherwise, uh, feel free to hit me up on email later on. Of course, the slides will be published. Um, that's usually the first question, so I just derailed that one. Uh, anybody have questions or comments? We have a microphone up here. Now, I'm, I'm going to mock you if you come up to me after the presentation and ask me a question about the presentation, if you don't ask now. Okay, well, thanks very much, folks.